Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to a very Tasmanian episode. Uh, I'm joined by my friend, rapper, comedian, etc. Greeley. Hey guys, hey welcome, Lewis. welcome back. Thank you, bro. It's always good to be back on Spearhead Sundays. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's and been a while. you know, well, it's, this is the most Tasmanian the show's ever been. You know, two yeah. fully full blood, lifelong Tasmanians on the show. Man, it's <laughs> um, what? What's funny? I'm Tasmanian. Have you got we a scar are. yet, though? Yes, you do. Yep. Show me. No, <laughs> it's in a it's in a private place. True. Show me your scar. Still, all right. Still got it there? Yeah. Is it there? <laughs> yeah. Is it there? Yeah, yeah there it is. Yeah, I haven't there. shaved it recently, so there's a bit of back hair coming out of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty Tasmanian, a hairy scar. Yeah, hairy neck scar. Yeah. We've yeah. been, um, Keelan and I, we've been in, in a few Facebook groups. Um, oh, yeah. Tassie Facebook groups? They're great. Wait, what, which ones? Uh, Keelan's in, in a great one, which is it's something like advice for moving to Tasmania. Oh, yeah. And it is full of Tasmanians going, fuck off, we're full. <laughs> like, full. Like, do not come here. We have no advice for you. You guys are making the rent more expensive. Yeah. Get out. And I, as a Taswegian, agree. Yeah, I yeah. think these mainlanders coming here, moving in, and raising the, the cost of the rent for us Tasmanians is ridiculous. I think it's like, yeah, yeah, for, for us Tasmanians. Yeah, well, they're stealing our jobs. <laughs> exactly. This <laughs> is going to end up in a South Park episode. Yeah. Out the it West Coast. Out. Dude, yeah. it literally is. We were just saying before, yeah. yesterday, when we were looking at the post, it is, they took our jobs. Oh, it's definitely, well, they But did. it's true. <laughs> it is true. It is true. But we're definitely not full. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a lot of room. There's a lot of room. There is a lot of I don't know how much of it's for sale. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah, or to rent, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, I've, been, I've been looking at houses like, yeah, because me and my partner want to work, uh, move Probably I have an opportunity for you. Yeah. Do you like mice? <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to ask to move in, but it sounds like you've got enough roommates. <laughs> I have I have a lot of roommates. Yeah, you've got heaps. Like too many roommates. Yeah. I live with rats. Can you count them? <laughs> oh, no, it's beyond <laughs> and counting. And you've also got a cat. Yeah, this we like, have a cat. We had a little fight today. Have you talked about the cat on the podcast? Yeah, um, we have. There's a cat neighborhood cat that does its like daily patrols, and part yeah. of its patrol is apparently the inside of the house. So we leave the back door open sometimes, and she'll just walk in and go upstairs, have a look around, check yeah. everyone's bedroom, sit on my lap for a little bit for a little scratch, and then go off and investigate but the, the other house. But does nothing about the rats? <laughs> no, it doesn't doesn't do anything about the mice. I assume it's full, to be yeah. honest. It might have eaten three before it came in the yeah, house. No and it doubt. was like, oh thank no thank you. I'm I've had enough. Or maybe yeah. like because you know, with this colony of rats in this area, yeah. maybe they just became like like a peace treaty between yeah. all the cats. Because this is a pretty rich, you know, like nice area. Like Yeah. As you, I was told by a by a woman in the street, did you hear that part no? of Okay, so I'm walking down Hobart and this woman comes up to me and she's like oh hey Lewis I'm like yeah hey what's up and I go and she's like oh do you what are you here I'm like oh I'm I've moved here she goes oh what what area are you in and I told her the the area and she goes ah oh, rich cunt yeah rich cunt rich cunt <laughs> middle of the day she says it three win. times louder and louder and louder I told her the suburb she got angrier and angrier you should make a club song called rich cunt with rats yeah rich yeah. rat cunt yeah rich rat cunt yeah lord of the rats but I didn't just the Pied Piper of Tasmania yeah <laughs> like I didn't really understand what she meant because you know the rent here is expensive but it's a pretty shit place but yeah. then I walked around like properly investigated the neighbourhood there's places that I thought were castles, mm. like historical sites yeah, yeah. that you could tour, and then I realized that they were just homes. Yeah, that's the thing. Like that's crazy. This area is very old. Yeah, like, it's probably one of the. It, this is, would have been. This would have been the city before the city was the city. You know, like yeah, especially around Salamanca. Well, that's what the mouse man said. He goes, "Oh, I said, is there anything we can do other than baiting? Because yeah, yeah. they all they can do is bait." And he goes. Look, I'll be honest with you. I can't solve the mouse problem. Mm. All I can do is send them to the neighbor's house. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, send them on their way, right? Gift wrap those little cunts. Yeah. Uh, but he was like, These, this place is so old and mm. the house is so old that it was like built like, or, you know, probably the bones of this is 200 years old. Yeah, yeah. Actually. Because it was 1833 yeah. when down there was built. So this is at least 200 years old or maybe, yeah. maybe a little bit less. So like I've got an ancestor... And my family, forgive me, I can't remember his name right now. Mm. But like my uncle, 
You'll probably bump into him. <laughs> I think he's been dead for a while. But, um, <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, true. That is but, what ancestor means. Yeah. There's, so my uncle like yeah. put together, like he, as far as I know, this ancestor worked on a big boat. Well, yeah. His story was he used to be an altar boy just at the church a few blocks that way. Right. And this is like 1850. Yeah. And um, one day he asked for his cut of the... Um, no, it's not communion. You know, yeah, what, what is it? Put the money in the, the tray. The money. The scam. I haven't been dragged to church by the my The scam bowl. Go, yeah, the scam bowl. You yeah. know, like. <laughs> but yeah, so this altar boy, my ancestor asked the priest, like, when when do I get my cut? Of the tithe. Yeah, of the tithe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, the priest, like, beat him within an inch of his life over it. And apparently he like went and licked his wounds for six months and like, like he couldn't walk for ages, like nearly... Really? Yeah, like fucked him up. You wow. know what I mean? And um, he didn't want to work in the church anymore after that. Why? <laughs> so <laughs> he went for a walk down the road here, yeah. which is only like 300 metres down here to Salamanca, yeah. and he went to a ship and asked for a job on the ship. Yeah. And he was only yeah, a teenager or something, and yeah. they put him on the ship, and he ended up, by the time he was an adult, he became like a captain, mm-hmm. and um, he used to go between here, Sydney, and Auckland in New Zealand oh, cool. and do the trades with spices and tobacco yeah. with the like full cannibal tribes in New Zealand. And in this yeah. book, it's got like one of his old drawings. Those tribes in New Zealand, some of them were fucking hectic. Oh, they were hectic, man. Like they were, they were like, I can't remember the name of the group, but like one of the only indigenous groups in history to like beat back yeah. settlers. Well, they're not, Maoris aren't technically indigenous because they actually... The Maori. I don't know too much about them. Okay, so before the Maoris came, there was the Moriori's. Yes, I know that. The, yeah, and so the yeah. the Maoris came and ate them. Yeah. So that's why they're so big. Yeah, yeah, and they just yeah they um they still got invaded, but England had to make a deal with them. Yes, yeah. And when they didn't, they they're they like, still, oh, they we don't t- do deals, and they were like, you will for us, cause. yeah. But then they gave them blankets with smallpox, mm. and you know. Yeah. Used other strategies of war to try and take yeah. them out, you know. But, um, yeah, so my ancestor used to, like, go into Auckland and, the, like, from the, his old ship notes, his book was put together and it had a drawing oh, cool. that he did of his ship coming into the bay and they'd yeah. all come out in their canoes and escort him in. And, yeah, he, one of his, so cool. his notes was about going into the head of a tribe while they were having, like, a cannibal feast. And, and having to trade tobacco and spices with the head of this tribe. Yeah. Hey, while, guys, while hope you're not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so, hectic. But that was th- three blocks down the road Yeah, 200 years ago. Wow. You That's, know what I mean? Yeah, there's so much so much history here. It's, it's pretty crazy. Like, it, it's the type of place that um, Antifa would love to do some renovating around <laughs> here. Like, all these, all these statues and shit, they'd be like, why is this guy still up? Oh. Everywhere you look, you're like, uh, why does he have a plaque? Yeah, there's <laughs> there's, there's a um, statue in Franklin Square of, uh, I can't even remember his name at the moment, but yeah, he's he killed lots of Aboriginal people. And, yeah. And um, my partner's cousin, who's an Aboriginal artist, he actually did an installation on this statue. Yeah. And he went and put a meat cleaver in his hand. Sick. And like, and put a, up a plaque at the bottom. And got he got permission for it. It was a part of like an art project for him to kind of, yeah, radicalise this old s- statue. That's cool. And, it, um, yeah, and he put, like, blood all over him and shit like that. I think that's I think that's better than taking it down, is just make it a little bit more honest. Honest, yeah. I reckon they should still get rid of it. Probably, like, yeah. Not not too good to, for the kids to see a guy who killed heaps of people covered no. in blood and meat cleaver. But at the same time, you're right, the education is better, you know, because, like, especially with the, ed- you know, in regards to education, to the yeah. history of Tasmania, so much... Of it was suppressed, and they tried to. Well, that is the whole know. debate of like people are like, oh, don't pull down statues because it's history, and it's like, yeah, but they don't. They never tell the full story. Yeah, it's their history. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's so it's like, do you pull it down or do you replace it with something else that tells more story? Yeah, it's, it's not something you can please everybody. I well, suppose. I think, I think that's the answer. Take down the old stuff and just put up the honest history. Yeah, and own it. You know, acknowledge it. I think, mm. especially in regards to like, Australia. but it just doesn't make you feel good, does it? You know, oh, no, it at, doesn't. Looking at a and statue of a guy giving blankets to a tribe, <laughs> it's fine. There's nothing wrong with these. You know, yeah. 
It's not not something you look at and you go, yeah, that's how we built this town. No, definitely. <laughs> but at the same time, I think it's more important than yeah, yeah trying, it is. To, trying to hide history. You it know? is. Because it's so much confusion in Australia today. You know, like my partner's a Tasmanian Aboriginal. And when well, we're, I've when learned we're up so in much just from having a couple of conversations with her. Yeah, exactly. I've gone, ooh, didn't know that happened. Exactly. And like when we were up in New South Wales, we went to this guy's house and the first thing this fellow did when he goes, oh, all the Tasmanian Aboriginals got wiped out. And Denny's just turned around and gone, I'm still here, cunt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And like, and I've heard and, that and it was before. Very, yeah, well, that's, that was, that, oh, uh, Tasmania doesn't have Aboriginals. They got rid of them all. Yeah. That's, well, that's what the true. government pushed. They pushed yeah. that agenda. You that know? was the goal. And that was their war tactic, mm. you know, of like complete genocide is like completely disregard. The families that have come mm. from that, you know, and yeah, it's a deep history, and I, I encourage you to actually look it up because yeah, yeah, the you know hundreds of years of a government trying to push an agenda. I wasn't taught about it in school, and thankfully, no, you're just not like yeah. when even when I did high school, it's like briefly Aboriginal history is like maybe a week for me. Yeah. Might be different for other schools, but for me, it was about a week, and it was just like, yeah, they lost. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we got them. Yeah. That was kind of the, all the history was. Yeah. Like, oh, they they sometimes they would eat these things mm. and they would do those things and we got them. Yeah. And that was it. Fully. And it was like not really any appreciation for their culture or like no. acknowledgement of terrible things that yeah. settlers did. Yeah, well, like, even my partner's mother got suspended for, from school for mm. saying she was an Aboriginal. For saying she was Aboriginal. Yeah. That's, what, that's the shit where like people are yeah. like, oh... I, it's over, and it's like, I don't know, if people are still alive and they can remember yeah. hectic discrimination, yeah. it's not over. Well, yeah, um, Denny's great-grandmother, she only passed away a few years ago, mm. and she was alive to be labelled as an animal, you know? Yeah. And so it's really not that long ago. No, it's, it's like two people ago, really. Yeah, yeah generations but, are not, you know, they're pretty short, really, Yeah, in the grand scheme of things. Mm. But, yeah, there's heaps of old weird shit around Hobart, like... That, yeah, some of it should stay. I think some of it should go. But I think, yeah, history is good. I think everything, you know, learning about it and I don't mind the amendment. And, a lot of people hmm. get really angry at like um, like Looney Tunes uh, or Warner Brothers with all of their racist cartoons. Instead of getting rid of them, they add a little disclaimer going, this is what we used to do. This is really bad. But to get rid of it would be to pretend that it never happened. Yeah. So here it is, if you, we disavow Exactly. This. I kind of like that. I of, think it's important because if of, you don't yeah. learn your history, history repeats. Yes. And, you know, like I remember being so naive as a fucking white person at one mm. point where I was just like, as if racism still exists. I'm well, not I thought, racist. I thought the internet yeah. fixed that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. then you just see the chaos that's going on around the world. Yeah. And, you know, these last 10 years has been very enlightening for myself and I know for a lot of people around the world just learning about, I guess, identity politics, all sorts of shit yeah. that wasn't around 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Or yeah. if it was, it wasn't in the small corners of the world like Tasmania, Australia, you know, but yeah. not on a on a mainstream level. No, but, um, no, definitely not. Yeah. It's very interesting. I saw a trans person in, in Hobart. Yeah. Never, literally never thought I'd see the day. Really? Well, my <laughs> Tasmania. mom. My mum's got it. There's a trans comedian in Hobart, and she's really good. Queen. Her name's Chloe. She yeah. Chloe Black. Shout outs, Chloe. She's really, really good. In, look, she, in my defence, it could just be a regular woman that's also Tasmanian. Oh, you know, I'm not oh, sure. I assume you can't. You can't. You can't, you hey, can't hey, I'm Tasmanian. Hey, They're my people. No, no, no. no. I'm a Tasmanian. You, you can't. You can't claim it and then drop that sort of joke. That's what? The, They're my, I, can, I can't tell jokes about my own people? <laughs> uh, zip. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, my mum's got an interesting story about yeah. when she was a teenager. And mm. She was in Salamanca, just down the road. Mm -hmm. And um, she saw, I'm not sure what the term is for back then, but what she, you know, she would call a cross-dresser yeah. back then. It was a... It was a man dressed up as a woman yeah and no one had really noticed and mm. it was kind of a large crowd there and um the cross dresser fell over and went oh fuck like in a man's voice uh. and everyone freaked out and the cops ran in and arrested <laughs> what the, fuck? the cross dresser because it was awful. it was illegal to be gay in tasmania till 1997 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, so if you This were, place is every fucking day I find out something yeah, like it was, it was illegal to be gay in Tasmania until nineteen ninety seven. So like, That was like legalized after I was born. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. See that's it, not that yeah. long ago. You know what I mean? Like No. And um but how's the logic of that? Like mm. you like people of the same sex too much. It's not yeah. acceptable. So we're gonna punish you by locking you up mm. with heaps of people of the same sex. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be like, oh, great. <laughs> Wonderful. Do we do we get our own section? <laughs> yes, to protect you from the other prisoners. Yeah. Oh <laughs> wow. This sounds very nice. <laughs> Chains and cuffs too. <laughs> Incredible. Well, yeah, yeah, that's crazy, eh? Isn't it? Yeah, it's it is. Interesting. It is. Uh, Australia is like in so. Australia is like so futuristic and progressive in some areas, and then so fucking backwards in others. Mm. Where it's like often, I often I feel like we're at way ahead of where we actually are. Yeah, like even just with the Melbourne riots. Like, yeah, you know, you, you look at Capitol Hill in America, and you think. Fucking, we've got it pretty good. We're all right. Yeah. You know, we're, we're ahead of them. Yeah. And, but then that you. That could never it, happen here. Yeah, yeah. But then, at, like, watching the riots in Melbourne, I was like, that's right. We don't have freedom. But we do. You know what I mean? But, like, yeah. It's, it's just interesting that Melbourne is now, everyone around the world is looking there like, this is. This is the most draconian, blah blah yeah. blah blah blah. Because you know, for as far as we've all been told, Melbourne's the most livable city. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, it was, but now all those <laughs> bloody mainlanders—they're running around like headless chickens. Yeah, I know. They need to get the shit together. Yeah, they're ridiculous. Start fucking the cousins or something. Oh, I mean, work for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that shit's that shit's like pretty crazy. It's like, very all interesting. That. And it's 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 really interesting, like seeing uh, how Americanized, like we have become. Definitely, like people really want America's problems here. And that, that left com- wing, right wing, yeah, they yeah. really want. They do our, our America's problems because you know, like like the America had to have a real big problem before a giant conversation around Aboriginal rights was yeah, sparked. Hundred you know? percent, which you know, it's it's a good result, but well, like hey hey, it it's came Saturday. from yeah. When they had bl- had blackface on Hey Hey it's Saturday, yeah, they were like, "Oh, this is acceptable." Yeah, and then an American came in and went, "No, it's not." And they went, "Oh no, that's right, it's not." Sorry, America, yes. we're we're, yeah. we're trying to be like you. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, and an American had to go. Yeah, yeah, I don't think this is good at all. I think and an- was another that, moment that clip of that blackface thing. If you haven't seen it, who was it? Harry? Who, who, was, who was the, the American? American? Oh, he's got glasses. I can't. Some, some yeah. like whoever they could get is basically who he was, yeah. right? Just some like famous American guy, mm. and they they these they do a talent show, and and one talent, five people come out in blackface, and they they're doing the Jackson Five, and yeah. they do like a Jackson Five song, dancing around full blackface, yeah. and then the Australians are like, great stuff, mm. seven, ten, and then the American guy goes zero, and they're like, what? You didn't think it was good? And he goes, I don't think they should do blackface. You go, yeah, but they can sing. You know, how good was the dancing? It's, goes, hey, hey, it's not the dancing. It's not the song. The song was great. It's the blackface. Harry Connick Jr. Yeah, yeah there we go. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, and and he was like, he, he was like, do I have to explain why this is mm. not good? Yeah, uh, we've been caught out. At, like, even was it Daryl Summers called Muhammad Ali boy? Yeah, have you seen that when he called yeah. him boy and Muhammad staunched him? That, mm. was, that was a great. I think another. I don't know if you did. You ever see the show Recovery? No. You should watch it. You should watch the doco about it, and then you should watch a few episodes yeah. of it because it was like nineties um, Saturday morning television, mm. pretty much run by teenagers for teenagers, and it was the first ever proper like youth live television show, and cool. heaps of outrageous shit happened, like Public Enemy. Um, rocked up to the show, did a set on this show, thinking it was a sound check. Oh, and like it was live television, so it's just like <laughs> Public Enemy pacing around, going, 
yeah, just rapping me lyrics. And, 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 you know, just doing sound check. And then at the end, the crowd claps. And, and, they're, and they're like, what? And they're like, you know, that was the show. Yeah. That was the show. Look oh. that shit up. Recovery, public enemy. It's gold. Bro, but, man, if yeah. that happened to me, I would, do, I would just be broadcast on stage going, I'm gay. I'm yelling. This is how loud I get. And this is how quiet I get. I'm gay. That's my sound check. <laughs> like every show because it amuses just, just us come out yeah come out the closet at every sound check yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah chuck chuck d from public enemy he acts similar sort of thing like Fuck, you'd be so angry i don't know if you know much about public enemy they like spoke a lot about you yeah. know political rights all sorts of stuff yeah, like that yeah. and um yeah they came in and it was just it was very white australian mm. you know like it was all uh jebediah some 41 oh, not some 41 I'm trying to think of those other Aussie bands that are around that era. Killing Heidi. Yeah. You know, all that sort of stuff. Nice. Yeah, nice yeah, rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice mainstream yeah. They've, they've white They've got Australian drums, but they don't go rock. too hard. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and then Chuck D comes in and he just like, yeah, spoke on some real shit in regards yeah. to like Aboriginal history in Australia and acknowledging it. And it's really interesting watching the dynamic of the whole crowd go, oh, mm. oh, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. He's, he knows hey, he, he, we were ignoring that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it back in the cupboard. <laughs> but yeah, um, I love I love those moments, especially in the nineties. <clears throat> yeah, the nineties was so interesting. Between like the whole world kind of catching up with each other, mm. heaps of like comfortable, acceptable, toxic behaviour in the media. Like yeah. I've been watching David Letterman snippets of him being the creepiest oh yeah like it was like a bit like yeah. old guy yeah hits on young girl every chick that ever like walked into david letterman he's like you smell good yeah that's the first thing he says to him yeah mm, i appreciate your fragrance so i appreciate that yeah and he fucking touches them all yeah. the time mm. he's like rubbing their legs oh what pets are those oh yeah. nice pets Yuck. i and don't then, like that yeah he sucked jennifer yeah. aniston's hair that one's the one that got me what? All right. Remember Jennifer Anderson? Yeah. Friends? Yeah. Right. So he's like, out of nowhere, they're in an interview, mm. and he's just like, just let oh, me. Oh, you got the video? All right. So we're going to watch this video. Okay. So he just. <laughs> that's a, that is a title. That's, a, that's yeah. a great title. David Letterman sucks on Jennifer Aniston's hair. What a title. Shall I like recreate what he does to Lewis for Abs the camera? Absolutely All not. Right. This will be the Absolutely last not. episode. Oh. <laughs> this will be the, that'll be the last episode. <laughs> I'm shut down. This is creepy. So I'll comment. I'll commentate. Can I commentate? Yeah. All right. So she's sitting there. They're having a nice interview. She's answering mm. his questions. <clears throat> she's dressed quite respectable. <laughs> David's pretending to seem interested. And then he asks her if she's okay. naked in a sauna. And he looks at the camera and he's like, the camera, oh, yeah. And he starts licking his lips. Yuck. So this was comfortable, acceptable late night shows in the 90s. And she's fucked. talking about a creepy experience that she had. Yeah. And he's like, yes, I wish I was doing that to you. That's awesome. <laughs> it's fucked. How long does this video go for? Oh, it's three minutes. All right. Okay. Skip I it was to the hair minute. sucking. Yeah. Skip to the suck. <laughs> Things said while while browsing Pornhub. <laughs> oh, we oh, missed okay. it. Missed it. Fucking right. hell. Went to the end of the video. But yeah, long story short. Oh, here it is. Here it is. He leans over. Oh my he God. starts like sticking his tongue out. Like a reptilian fucking look at what the fuck is that? You're and like, she's like, and she stop. she's pulling back, and then he grabs her hair, puts it in his mouth, starts sucking it, and then sucks off it like it's a string of spaghetti. It's fucked. If you haven't That's seen it, watch weird. it. This is what, and the crowd's applauding. Everyone's just like, this is great late night television. And what she the fuck doesn't appreciate it. She does not appreciate it. That's. That is Man. definitely hashtag me too. And you know what? 
That's that's why PC culture's gone too far because we can't have good honest comedy like that anymore. <laughs> you know, PC culture's gone too far, and these social justice warriors want to make it unacceptable to lick your guests. All right, that's real comedy. Bring it back. <laughs> yeah, it was fucked up, eh? Yeah, it was just like, you know, and th- th- it's interesting because I've been I'm going down the rabbit holes of watching old late night shows, and you know, Rodney Dangerfield who will come in and just do. Full bid just on my mm. wife jokes and yeah and things that you know you don't see in this day and age but and, th- and people be like well that's not acceptable and it's yeah. like there's a difference between making some jokes and sucking someone's hair and well yeah know. well I think like you know like undoubtedly there'll be a few comments you know, on this going oh what are you angry about that and now where it's like yeah jokes are fine yeah but when you see like shit in reality in real life with the intention behind it to hurt or Mm. or take advantage of that's the shit that you should have a problem with that's why when when people like put out put in all this fucking effort to cancel people for telling jokes it's like man direct that energy elsewhere love the energy but you're you're throwing it at the wrong person yeah and it's it's interesting how so like just how people take things personally these days like last Mm. night i started watching squid game yeah. You guys have watched it? So good. Yeah, yeah. I've only seen the first two episodes yeah, so far. I've got in about but the same amount. Fuck. Good. But did you did you get into it and the English overdubs were on? I couldn't watch the overdub. Nah. I'm watching sub. Yeah, so The overdub's yeah, yeah, yeah. awful. Exactly. It destroys me. Yeah. And, and I thought, I was like... Oh. I was like, how can I make this a funny joke? Yeah. This is like 11 o'clock at night, you know. Yeah. I'm just kicking back watching this. And, and I thought, oh, throwback. Fucking, your mama's so dumb, she watches Squid Game with the English subs on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like your mama jokes are yeah. fucking 100 years old. Yeah. And, yeah. Should, it's, staple it's, 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 of, of humour. A, a staple of humour. Especially humor. online. Yeah, and especially, like, yeah, that was a whole style of, like... One of the first memes, really. Re- well, you know? Man, it was happening, like, I think the history of your mama stuff goes back to, like... Hundred years ago, yeah, you know, and it became this competitive thing of your, but like, yeah, because it was they were all your mama, like it, it wasn't personal at all. Nah, it nah. was not personal. You yeah. know what I mean? Because you could say it to anyone. Yeah, and it's just a generic like yeah. setup, and mm. then which different punch you can have, you know? Yeah, and um, I thought this will be a um. This will be a good little joke to post on my Facebook page because I know everyone's watching. Squ- moments before disaster. Yeah. This will be a good joke for Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, is it? <laughs> and, you know, because I know everyone's watching Squid Grain right now. Yeah. And I know every person would have either started it and gone, ah, oh, fuck, it's overdubs. Or, ah, oh, oh, fuck, I don't want to read. I don't, yeah, yeah. And and they would have had that discussion yeah. with their partner or their housemate or whoever. The, if you watch Squid yeah, yeah. did you watch the subtitles? You know, so. I've been telling everyone, don't. Watch the dub. You yeah. know the dub well, that's is what, Dunn has actually hit me up and said that. Yeah, it's it's actually Korean people who speak English. Yeah, right. It's a Korean company that's done the dub rather than like people who speak Korean but their main language is English. Yeah. So it's a little bit off. And then also just the, oh, I, I just hate dubs in general yeah. because you know Korean language is so much more efficient than English. Mm. So if you want to get the same sentence in the same amount of time, in the English version, you've got to chop words yeah. and context. So totally. it just ends weird. Whereas with subtitles, you can have mostly what you, what think, they're saying. I think overdubs really takes the integrity out of their acting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. If you're an actor and your delivery, your tone of voice, your facial exp- facial expression, yeah. your voice matches everything and that's the full package of what yeah. a performance is. So when you've got overdubs, yeah, it slices your integrity in half, I think. Even yeah. if they're yeah, for well sure. done overdubs, you know. Yeah, well because and like with with the the stuff that you'll lose in translation from Korean to English with the subs, you lose a few words or meanings or whatever. You can pick it up with tone yeah. and expression. Well, what I did, I just turned, um, I was watching on my laptop and I chucked the subs on and I turned it right down so I couldn't distinguish the voices I heard. Right. If you know what I mean. And after an hour, I was hearing the sub, you know what I mean? Like yeah. my, I was reading the subtitles and my brain would hear the muffled as English. 
Yeah. 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 So, like, after a while, I, was, I swear you just spoke So, you're English. fluent in Korean now. I guess, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's incredible, man. What are you going to do? The, the, just back to the, the your mama joke. I had, like, about 10 people inbox me, like, hey, bro, that's not very fair. And and I was like, look, I'm sorry. What do you mean? Because, obviously, they watched with the overdubs on. Yeah. And they saw... Oh, you said... He said, my mum's dumb. I watched it with the overdubs on, so that must mean I'm dumb. And they just took it hell personally and hit me up like, you're heaps better than that, Grills. And I was like, oh, come on. It was like, you know what I mean? I was just that's trying to come up with like a silly, and that's what, and I wrote it as, yo mama so dumb. You know what yeah. I mean? I wrote it like yeah. specifically like how it was written 100 years ago to kind of so, accentuate the fact yeah. I'm just doing a throwback old joke and adding something relevant like Squid Game to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And people just like, oh, bruv. Come on, man. Yeah. She's a lovely person. You're heaps better than that, bro. Yeah. And I was like, oh, fucking hell. I would say that that's them proving your point. It is. <laughs> if, if they're so <laughs> dumb that they get offended at a, your mama joke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was, you might be worse. Uh, the phone number on that business card they hand out in the show was someone's real phone yeah, number. Yeah, I did see that. Yes. Yeah, this they poor had to, Korean fella, he just got millions of calls a day. I don't run a game. I don't... I don't. <laughs> like, Who's calling me, man? That's so funny. <laughs> Poor bastard. I've, you know what I used to do? This is uh, for some reason. When I lived in Seaford, back yeah. when we first met. Yeah. And we uh, we used to watch Wipeout. Like in the first. Yeah, the, the first seasons of Wipeout. Yeah. And they'd say their full name and the town they were from. <laughs> and so me and my friends would find them on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and just send the messages. Wipeout contestants. Yeah, yeah, and send the messages just like taking the piss out of them for how they fell off the ball <laughs> and shit. <laughs> I don't know why. That, yeah. It That's. Was, it was funny though. It was really good. It yeah. is something funny about like fucking with a wipeout contestant. Yeah. That probably did that. Why well, did that five years ago? And I <laughs> fell over in 30 seconds. Who's this cunt from Australia? Yeah. Why is he messaging me? <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I like that. I reckon that more wipeout contestants deserve more more abuse in their. We, we'd only do the ones that would try to be like absolute fucking dickheads in their little yeah. pre-interview. You know yeah. how that was their little moment to yeah. shine, and you just get hell weirdos like real American shit. Yeah, real full American shit. Yeah, you just get the weirdos rolling through like uh, yeah. Good and times. we we had a real American moment uh, at our local cafe. It was it was great. You're you're actually American also. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you're not a full Tasmanian like I am. <laughs> you're half American. <laughs> right? <laughs> really it's gonna walk off this podcast. <laughs> no, I love it. It's good. It's good. I just find it so entertaining. Because if it wasn't for COVID like five years ago, I was, it would have said you should move to Tasmania yeah. and he would have looked at me like why fuck the fuck that. would I do that? Why would I do that? Absolutely I not. I appreciate that you like where you live, Greeley, but yeah. no, you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and here we are. You know, this is, this is like, I guess, the positive side of COVID. Mm. You know what I mean? You've got to yeah. take the positives out of any negative. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My, um, my sweet, my mm. sweet justice yeah in like tasmania having a bad reputation it's just you know what i mean because we copped it we copped it for fucking ages like yeah and it, and it was known as a shithole and then yeah, as soon as it got unfair. out that it wasn't lewis moved here and all the fucking rent well no up. i'm tasmanian all right so you know we don't talk about when i became tasmanian okay, okay? you know yeah that's discrimination have you noticed that people are really unimpressed when you say you're from victoria <laughs> Like, I was, at, I was signing up to... Well, I didn't gym. say I'm from Victoria. I was yeah. to the gym yesterday yeah. and I go, yeah. oh, I'm only going to be here for six months. I'm going back to Victoria. And she goes, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 That's like, oh, so you don't like it here. You just have to be here, huh? Yeah. yeah. And that's a typical mainlander attitude, I think. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you filthy just mainlander. Quitting Cuban. as soon as you can, all right? Not like us actual Taswegians. Yeah. Yeah, you it's a good one. It. It's I like how you've taken ourselves. that on. Yeah, you've really taken on the Taswegian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that good. is good. You've made it relevant again. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So we're at the uh, we're at the local cafe, and okay, this yeah. and this guy, like, is like so American. You know, where oh. Americans just don't. Do they know how loud they are? 
Okay, so like this, every I've, time I've analyzed this. I've analyzed this, and because you know, I have American family, yeah. and like, and that like, like when I speak to my auntie, she's got such a strong American accent, yeah, that it's almost novelty to me, you know. Yeah. And hey, Andrew, how yeah. are you? You know, like, and yeah. um, I feel that the loudest Americans are the ones that travel. Cause yeah, because I, like, I didn't. When I was in New York and LA, I didn't feel like people were loud. No, they're not. I lived over there for. a a fair bit and yeah. you did two kilo yep and yeah. yeah they're not that loud but I feel like they get when they're travelling they're just like ho 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 you know yeah. like, and they're just like well I'm American I'm from the the land you're lucky of the, to have me here yeah yeah you want, oh man once once I put, it was when I put out my second ever video clip yeah. and I got hit up by Rebels bikey president from Tasmania. Of course. Who's pretty notorious yeah. and um, had a pretty scary reputation. Why and, would he be notorious? Oh, I don't want to go into that. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. And um, I, I, yeah, I put out this song and he wrote on my page, yeah. and this is early Facebook days, yeah. um, he wrote on my fan page, Please come to my clubhouse. Mm. And I got hit up by everyone. Now that can be interpreted two ways. Yeah. An invitation or a, or you better come uh, talk he, to uh, me. He didn't say please. He yeah. said come to my clubhouse. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I had like 10 of my friends hit me up like what the what have you done? <laughs> and I yeah. was like, oh, just I don't know. Like I haven't done anything wrong. Yeah. I, I'm assuming he likes my song. I don't know. Like mm. what's the deal? And um I didn't reply straight away. And then he wrote again on my Facebook page. How said, terrifying would it be if you rocked up to the clubhouse and you were like, man, I'm glad you like my song. And he went, what song? <laughs> You'd be like, oh, no. I've made an error. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so long story short, um, he ended up, he was persistent. And yeah. I went, well, I'll just go down and catch up with him. Mm. And I knew of this guy for a long, like half of my life. And I was yeah. pretty intimidated by his reputation. Mm. But I was like, I haven't done anything wrong. There's no reason for him to um, yeah. not like me. Yeah. Hopefully he's friendly. I'll pay respects and, you know, mm -hmm. go down. So I went down. And, yeah, it turns out he really liked my song. I had a beer with him. Had mm -hmm. a good chat. Had a game of pool. And um, then cruised off. But while I was having a beer with him, yeah. and I'll never forget this, an American mm. had just moved from America next door to this bikey club house. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there. <laughs> Probably thinks it's like a themed sports bar. Oh, wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And like, so I'm sitting there with this guy who's, yeah, pretty scary. He's got a yeah. pretty intense reputation. Yeah. And I'm just being respectful. Mm. You know, I really appreciate yeah. the hospitality and yeah. that you like my song. and. Yeah. Thanks, mate. You know what yeah. I mean? I just want to be respectful as possible. And so we're sitting there having a beer mm. and we're at the front yeah, when of you're at Yeah, when you're invited to a bikey's clubhouse, mm. the manners come out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you, I would, I would bring, bro. I would bring a set of twelve spoons. Yeah, straight up, man. Just in case. Well, I've learned my know. spoons. This one's for dessert. This one's for the main course. Man, look, this this is manners get you everywhere. Yeah, manners get you everywhere. Yeah, and like I remember watching um fucking I was watching Sunrise when I was in prison. Yeah, and and um Koshi was like. The only time you'd ever watch Sunrise. The, the only time I'd ever fucking watch Sunrise. <laughs> Kill me fucking <laughs> softly. Yeah. But, um, and Koshi said like fucking, mm. oh, I don't, I don't think it's necessary to say thank you to people in public anymore. Oh. When they, and I was like, you haven't been to a fucking bikies clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so it was, I'm at this bikies clubhouse and we're yeah. there with the president and a few other bikies mm -hmm. and out of nowhere we just hear... Hey guys, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> and this yeah. American guy walks in yeah. and he's got some um, Top Gun sunnies on. Yeah. Some like Tom Cruise of Top course, Gun sunnies. Yeah. And a suit jacket. Yeah. With a, sh like, with a polo shirt and just some uh, like. So American. Yeah, yeah. Shorts? And, no, he didn't have shorts, but they were just like, um, yeah. like khakis. Yeah, yeah okay. Or, yeah, 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 sort of deal. Mm -hmm. And he's walked in, he's like, hey guys, how are you? And like all the bikies were just like, <laughs> you know, they were just like, is this the bravest man on earth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he's walked over and he's like, hey, you guys like bikes. I love motorcycles. I got myself a Harley Davidson. And he just like walks over to their bikes and starts like, yeah. And like, <laughs> just, 
touching them. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But he's. I give it to him. He's brazen American comf- confidence yeah. and friendliness. Yeah. He, he 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 didn't upset anyone. He was respectful. <laughs> you could tell the whole time they were just like, "What?" And he's like, "I've just moved in next door." Yeah, I, I'm your new, I'm in your neighborhood. You That's like, so fucking yeah. funny. Because um, if he rocked up and was like, "G'day, boys! Fucking sick bikes!" Touched him. Oh, he'd wake up and go, "I'm in hospital." Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that bike teleported yeah. me. <laughs> it was it was such an interesting culture clash. Yeah. Like Tasmanian bikies. Um and like suburban American. Yeah, suburban Hey guys, oh you like motorcycles? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it was it was great. That is that I is I forgot like, about that one. That's so so classic, like obliviously polite and loud American. Yeah. Like uh we were uh, we were up the street getting coffee. And this American guy walks up with an okay. Australian girl yeah. and he walks up and he goes, and he goes, hey there, how are you going? To the woman behind the counter. She's like, yeah, good. And people in Tassie are really nice. Yeah. And even she was like, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, my so- name's Jim and this is my coworker, Alice. And she's like, all right. He goes, we work just down there. And she goes, yeah, what do you want? <laughs> like, like she's going, is this guy trying to sell me something? Like, yeah, what yeah. the fuck's going on? That's a, the, the casual, casual, like mm. pers- personal to personal behavior yeah. is like they're a fucking car salesman. Hey? Yeah, they're literally. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I actually thought that he was like going to sell her like coffee beans yeah, or, or some or something like something. that. Yeah. yeah, no one's that unnecessarily friendly. No, so no. you got to give it to him. Yeah, that's you what know, that's. Like, but that is so Australian. Is, is like, what does this yeah. guy want from me? Yeah, and like. I know we talked about culture cringe on yeah. um, that last podcast, and I noticed that heaps in America just like how positively supportive they can be, and they just mm. lack lack that tall poppy syndrome, you know. Yeah, and um, so bless them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you but, know, but you know what? Bless you em. know, as much as I make fun of loud tourist Americans, as soon as I was in New York, I was like. G'day, mate. Yeah, yeah, How's yeah. How's it going? Fucking oath. Yeah. Yeah, I'm from Australia. Australia. Yeah. Uh, did you ever have like? Did you ever meet it, while you guys have been in America? Did you have any Americans that just um, would believe anything about Australia? Yeah, all of them. All of them. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I far? actually did an entire TV pilot about that. That's right. <laughs> Fuck, that yeah. was a silly question, wasn't <laughs> no. it? No, it's one of my favorite pieces of work by you too. Yeah, I showed someone the other day. I was like, check it out. You know. Yeah, that is a good bit. Yeah, you're hundred percent right. <laughs> yeah, there, it's, it is, but it's just. You know, it's just... I can't believe I asked you that question. No, but it's just fucking like a hundred years of Australians going over and fucking with Americans because it's funny. Like, it's it's like a... I don't know if any other culture has this, but it's like a global... It's like a countrywide in-joke. Yeah. Of like, yeah, go to Americans and just talk out your ass. Yeah. I I had Americans go, oh, yeah, I would tell them a lie. Like, oh, yeah, there's kangaroos everywhere mm. or, or you know, we, we use boomerangs to hunt. Mm. Just, like, bullshit. And I would have, like, one time I had an American go, oh, yeah, I, I met an Australian dude. He said that to me. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's, like, really common for you? And I was like, oh, my God, someone's already paved the way here. Yeah. <laughs> what else do I chuck in the mix? It's like an unspoken, like, Australian unity <laughs> thing of, like, just we all yeah. cross the board lie to Americans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I was at school over there, I told someone I rode a kangaroo to school and that got around and, yeah, just pulled a few ones. Yeah. And you, also they're like, there's not many people there. So, you, like, any Australian that they know, you can convince them that you're related to them. <laughs> 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 no, nah, it's yeah. a small population, mate. Me and Paul Hogan, second cousins, you know, <laughs> like, but, yeah. <laughs> that is a good one. Just yeah. any, yeah, yeah, I, Hugh Jackman. I've had yeah. Christmas dinner with him. Absolutely. We're not, like, closely related, but, uh, you know. Yeah. Actually, I had a, I stayed with a family who was so gullible, very nice people. Yeah. yeah. But I said that Hugh Jackman was a family friend, and every Christmas <laughs> we'd go to his farm. And that, was, yeah. that is really good. Yeah. We've met, we've met, awesome. We met a good friend of Hugh Jackman when we were on tour, and we got to see his Wolverine jacket in Sydney. Do you remember? Oh, we did. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh fuck! I completely forgot about. It was that. like at the theater where he trained. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty oh cool. yeah, that's right. Because I was performing at like a proper performing arts. Yeah, theater, it was in the um, like in the Italian Forum. Yeah, that's Sydney. right. I forgot about that. They had a whole like Hugh Jackman shrine with all yeah. this really cool like memorabilia yeah, they, from the actual films. Yeah, it was like Wolverine jacket, bunch mm. of other stuff. Yeah, that was really cool. Eh? Yeah, fuck, that was sick. Uh, so good old Americans. 
Um, man, what else do we want to talk about here? We're well, Dave Chappelle special That's comes right. out today. Dave Chappelle. So I think it's come out just just today or, or like really late at night. Yeah. Um, and it's come out. But before it came out on Netflix, there were already articles trashing it for being, yeah. you know, racist and homophobic and, and, and edgy for the sake of it. Like exactly. I reckon they could have just changed the headline of the other articles they wrote about all of his other specials and mm. republished it. It's exactly the same. It was like history was repeating itself. Mm. Um, and I'm excited to watch it. I bet it's awesome. Yeah. Every, like, do these journalists know that it's, they're just doing great promo for Dave? That's the thing. Like, it's, you know, it's like exactly like what you did with the Prince Philip bib, man. You know, yeah. like, and... I emailed all of the journalists yeah. to write bad articles about me. Exactly. They did, and then it got maybe 10 million views. Exactly. You got Thank extreme you. success off them trying to be negative. Yeah. And it's very common in the hip-hop world as well. Like, mm. controversy, you know, just creating controversy. No I know such thing I know as bad this, press. Uh, who was it? Chameleon Air, I think, is a rapper yeah. from America, and I might be confusing him with someone else, mm. but Kanye was his manager yeah. when he came out to Australia, mm. and apparently Kanye told him, yeah. while you're in Australia, start at least three fights at your shows. Right. Yeah, and so Chameleon was... Chameleon Air was in Adelaide and one of my mates was doing security work for him. Yeah. But Chameleon Air was too pussy to start the fight himself. Yeah. And so he said to my mate, oh, can you go start a fight for me and I'll just get in there, but, you know, you do all the dirty work. <laughs> and my mate was like, Just Fuck so no. it's filmed. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. so, because, you know, you come to a show. Yeah, good press. A thousand, Chameleon Air shows are crazy. Say a, th- a thousand people come to watch your show. Yeah. You know, 995 of those people really like the show. You get in a fight with one person. Yeah. But everyone fucking talks about it. Yeah. And whether or not they think it's, it's acceptable. It's true. You always hear about the fights. Exactly. And That's whether or true. not they think it's acceptable or whether this, everyone's going to put their two cents in it about yeah. it. Yeah. And as an American artist coming to Australia and traveling, you just build and hype by starting fights. You know what yeah. I mean? It's creating controversy. It's pretty interesting. Well, you know, look forward to that at the yeah. next Lewis Spears show. Yeah, I've I was got some Tassie shows coming up soon. They'll be on sale now or in a couple yeah. of days. I might bring boxing gloves. Don't do that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so Lewis and I have um, Lewis has booked his Launceston show. Yeah, and it's on the same night as I'm doing a show in Launceston. Oh, and it was intentional. <laughs> it was intentional. <laughs> he, he didn't say this on camera. <laughs> He's like, "Oh, sorry, bro." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't know. And so it's the same day, but. Potentially, Greeley will still be able to open for my show yeah. and then run to his. So, so no promises, but we think we can get that done. I think I'm going to live stream it. Okay, you're set. Yeah, why not? I'll, yeah. Do, I'll do some old stuff. Yeah. And um, live stream the mission from opening up for you. That's cool. And Ubering back to the hip hop show. And yeah, just do it as, you know, That's something to do. That's very sick. Yeah. And then, I haven't asked you yet. Might as well do it while no. we're here. Oh. <laughs> gonna, do you want to rap it at my show? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. We could have a the little words practice. to my songs. Okay, we could pick just one of your verses that you remember the most. I could do probably could do the the little collab track we did. I yeah. could do half a song. Yeah, yeah, all you need is one verse. Yeah, yeah. And I we, could probably do that because yeah. the last time I did it, I did. I fucked it up because I forgot to breathe. Mm. But I didn't come to rehearsals because I was busy. Yeah, we, did, we didn't why. practice. So we could yeah. have a couple little prackies. Okay, when can we practice? Before, because we probably can't do it before the show. We or can maybe we s- can. We can sneak a pracky in, mate. Okay, all right. We've still got a month. Yeah, I'll give it a go. All right. All right. I'm going to embarrass myself. No, you won't. I might. You won't. It's in the realm of possibility. No. You're well, right. This is I'm going to fucking when, upstage you. This is how I... You're f- going to be embarrassed by me. Okay, well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I felt touring for you, bro. Like, yeah. I was so nervous the first time. Yeah. I did comedy. I was like, I'm just going to embarrass myself. Yeah. And- and I know all uh, my fans and all the hip hop scene loves you, man. Like everyone's been talking to me about all you right. moving down here. I guarantee you, come to my show, everyone will be like, "Mad cunt," you know yeah. what I mean? So and I'll be like, "Fuck, lost out on so many ticket sales." Yeah, could have come to mine. <laughs> I reckon you'll still do well, man. You're all fucking right. killing it. I'll I'll give it a go. How good is Lewis though? Like he's actually fucking killing it. It's I remember it's becoming big. Like because I haven't been. 
like regularly outside for mm. two years, like yeah. most of the other mainlanders, mm. I decided to stay in my house in Tasmania in solidarity. <laughs> but now that I've like stepped foot outside, I get stopped like multiple times a day, every yeah, single bro. day. And it's made me like, obviously the internet numbers have gone up, mm. but it does, it's not real until you see it in, yeah. in real life. It's just a number on a screen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like walking around, like, yeah, like cunts are yelling at me and stopping me. It's like, it feels big now. And doing 600 people in Brisbane, yeah. like the last one you opened for was four, five, 450. Was it? Yeah, it was 450. Yeah, right. And then I've come back and I've done 600. And it's you. And and it also, I, re- I think that I probably could have done May. I reckon I could have touched 900 if it didn't look like for two months those shows were not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. If Corona wasn't happening. Yeah, I think. I th- man, if Corona wasn't happening, you'd be doing 1500, I reckon. <laughs> But I remember, I don't know if you remember this, and this is just a nice little wholesome thing to bring up in the podcast, being at your mum's house mm. and your mum stressing about your comedy career and if it was going to be, you know, mm. if, if you, you were... You go- were around for all that. Yeah, I was there for it all. I, I yeah. remember saying to your mum, I'm like, he's going to do well, trust me. And she was like, <laughs> I don't know. He just wants to tell jokes and go around the country. And, and I was like... He's, he's hard work and he got it from you, so, yeah, you know, and bless, man, here you are. You know, you've, you've moved down here. You've got two employees that, mm-hmm. you know, are working for you. You're running a business. You, you know, you've got the YouTube shit. You've got your stand-up. You've got this podcast stuff. Everything you've done with Luke and I've watched I've that. You've got a hundred rats. you got a hundred rats. <laughs> <laughs> moving up in the world. <laughs> yeah, you know, I used to have no rats. Yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Get them rats up. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's counting stacks and counting rats. <laughs> it's very, very cool. It's awesome, bro. I'm it's proud really of you, cool. man. Thank you. Yeah, that's killer. Um, and I uh, bought a house. You bought a house. That's pretty fucking crazy. It's fucking hectic, man. Yeah, yeah. You bought a house and then moved to another yeah. state. Can't move into my own house. No, he b- bought a house and then. Moved to another state and rented a house in the richest area in the other oh, rich state. Cunt. <laughs> rich cunt. <laughs> like, to any average Tasmanian, yeah. they're just like, fuck him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you're pretty much, I've got to fucking watch out for my title of the mayor of Tasmania. Lewis is going to take over it. Yeah, I was actually going to have a word to you about All that. All right. We're, we're, they're Should swapping we, out the plaque. Can we have like moment. a rap battle to like. No. No, <laughs> yeah, come on. No, I, I quit. You know, I'll be assistant mayor. <laughs> Um, have you ever have you ever talked more about doing a, an Australian roast? Well, we we did one uh, over Zoom. I got roasted when I had yeah. blue hair, just like over Zoom yeah, when yeah. everyone was in lockdown, and that was really fun. We have talked about it a little bit. We we have all of the boys have been like playing with the idea of doing some like giant gala show yeah. at some point. I don't think it'll happen next year because everyone needs to like do their own tour and yeah. make their money and, and and you know make up for the last two years. But I think that maybe after next year, it's something, some kind of group show should happen. Especially, especially between your crew, you know what I mean? Yeah. Between like yourself, Luke, Isaac, Frenchie, yeah. Geordies, you know what I mean? If you get a good solid crew and then just find a washed up Australian celebrity that's desperate enough you know what I mean? Like, oh, you reckon roast someone else? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Would you, be... got, you got. Oh, what's his name? Um, ostentatious. How would that be? Imagine he that. would not show. He would not show. <laughs> but like, yeah, yeah, or just you know, some like some old like Australian. Koshy. Oh, Koshy, that'd be fucking epic, yeah. man. No, it would. It would. Yeah, I think some kind of group group event. We we talk about it every year. Yeah. Of like, because we see the gala happen, and we're like, man. Imagine if we did a gala for young people, filmed it all, put it on. Like, we would outrate them. Imagine Cursor. Yeah. Imagine all you guys do a roast on Curse, and then Curse gets up at the end and roasts all of you. Because he's so fucking he's funny. Because he's really funny, and he's he would clever. Do, he, I, honestly, roasting Curse would make me lift, because I would be worried about what he would say in return. Yeah, Because yeah. talking to him... Especially when we were in that big group chat when everyone was in lockdown and COVID was yeah. quite fun and we we're all in this group chat just like cyberbullying each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was often a tough opponent oh. to spar with. There's a reason why he, you know, he made such a name of Battle Rap Man because he's, yeah, he's, he's funny. He's great at clowning pe- people. Yeah. And I could really picture a roast of all you guys, yeah, mm. taking big shots at Curse and he's just sitting there with a big smirk on his face and then he gets up and yeah. just boof. Like, yeah. 
and kills. That, yeah. could, that could be that that would be peak Australian YouTube mm. culture, man. That would be the peak of it, I reckon. Oh yeah, mm. yeah. It's the type of thing where, like, you know, if 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 some network wanted to expand in Australia, like Amazon Prime mm. or whatever, they're trying to do Australian stuff, but they're getting all these radio and TV people. If they really wanted to make a splash, like something like that, yeah. would go nuts. It definitely copyright uh, Lewis and Greeley. Yeah, <laughs> we will sue. All right. As soon as I get rid of these rats, I'm gonna have a lot of free time. Um, it's, it's, it sucks that they yeah they're still not quite onto it, and the media in Australia doesn't realise what they're missing out on with a lot of um, different you know. Man, they're just scared of it, and they're trying. Yeah. They're trying to. They they uh they just want control. They don't yeah. give a fuck. I used to think like, oh, once we all start making enough money and attracting enough audience, business is business. So they'll be like, oh yeah, we would. Love to make money with you. Yeah. They actually don't. No. They would much prefer control. It's tall, That's that tall poppy syndrome again, man. Yeah. It goes back to that. Mm. It's just it's so bizarre how they just, yeah, don't get on it. Because like, oh man, you know. You could yeah. talk about it for fucking hours. Yeah, but 100%. It, it is what it is. And, and ultimately I am much happier controlling my own stuff. And exactly. Build, building my own thing. Oh man, you've done so. As we were just saying, you've done such a good job, and I'm just so excited to see where it goes, especially when, mm. you know, whatever happens with COVID. But in regards to our fucking shitty government handling it, now we've yep. got rid of um, Koala Killer and Bruz. Yeah, you know, not, you know, same strings, different puppet. I'm sure it's not going to be Mate, that much different. Have you seen today? Scott Morrison's come out, and he wants he wants to make changes to defamation law because and he and he wants tougher regulation for internet discourse jesus and i wonder why that is oh yeah because he's talking and he's talking about cyber bullying and to protect teens and children and it's like you're trying to protect your mates you're trying to protect pedophiles <laughs> like yeah in the hillsong church yeah you know what i mean like he did he did <laughs> he did like the the, like the guy that it was it he founded hillsong i yeah, want to yeah. get that right yeah the guy who founded hillsong uh is a pedophile and his son yeah, it's his, the one that took over. His son it. took over and run. You've seen him on TV. His son, like yeah. I used to watch him every morning and go, "This is weird." Yeah. Um, and uh, his father was like a notorious pedo and was about to be like, you know, investigated yeah. and, and, and he, taken in by the cops. And someone let mm. him know that it was going to happen. And then someone granted him special a special exemption to leave the country during COVID when no one else could. Mm. I wonder who has the power or the ability to do that. Could it be Scott Morrison, mm. a really good friend of his, who is a regular patron of Hillsong Church? Mm. Or could it be someone else in the government? government? I don't know. That's all alleged and it's, hearsay yeah, it's and rumour. It's all fucked up. But uh, looks like, to be linked. Even like here in Tasmania, um, <coughs> the Anglican Church... Yeah, and if you, I don't know if you know much about the Anglican Church. Not too much. It's the official church of the Commonwealth. So right. if you look in the like rankings of mm. the the Anglican Church, it pretty much goes like bishops, archbishops, the diocese, mm. um, queen, yeah, then Jesus, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the queen's like still up there, like it's yeah, it's yeah, completely like. Molded, Weird monarchy, yeah, shit. molded around the monarchy, medieval you know? stuff. But yeah, so many services in Tasmania. Like, even if you're homeless, there's there's not many services that aren't Anglican. Mm. And yeah, one of, like the main Anglican church in in Hobart, which is the same one that my ancestor was an altar boy. Yeah, like so many priests through that church were pedophiles and they all got done for it in the yeah. late 90s. Yeah. And like camp, not all of them. camps that I went to as a kid that were using those places, all sorts of fucking horrible shit. Yeah. A lot of people got abused and it, it did all come out but then it all got suppressed. Yeah. And one thing I realised after going through the court system in Tasmania and also but my mum is a Christian so I've spent a fair bit of time around churches mm. especially in my early days and growing up around it and you know I know the guy that baptized me as a baby um worked with the pedophile for 40 years said nothing said nothing I don't yeah. know if he knew anything but you know well, like it's um yeah it's very close to home and I feel that 
there's a weird tie between the Anglican Church. Well, look, mate. I mean, because it, it's the Commonwealth and we're Australia, we're a part of the Commonwealth, you know. Well, I know you're saying all of that, but the new uh, Premier of Sydney, Don Perrottet, yeah. he actually came out and spoke on this and said that if, uh, if uh, a priest hears about molestation and confesses it in a confessional, uh, the priest doesn't have to say anything. So, Oh, yeah, yeah, know, that's so right. That yeah. sentence started off like I was going to disagree with you, but he's... Loud and proud, baby. Yeah, yeah, no, right. Yeah. No, it's fine. if Look, if you commit to molesting a child, it's fine as long as you confess to it in the secret box. Then it's fine. The secret box. Yeah. Where, hey, hey, yeah. I said I fucked him in the secret box, <laughs> box so it's fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can he fuck him in the secret box and confess at the same time? Maybe that cancels That's it out. That's fucked. That's I think that fuck. cancels it out. Yeah, That's it fuck. never happened. <laughs> if you if you do if you confess something in the in the secret box, you know you can't get in trouble for it. But if uh. you commit something in the secret box, it never happened. Uh. Schrodinger's box. That's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> well, this podcast has been a good one, eh? Hey, <laughs> We've covered a bit of a range here. Yeah, there we go. You yeah. Know. So all those people who may have been upset with us talking about atrocities at the start, well, now we're very pleased that we're joking about them at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think we'll wrap it up there. Thanks yeah. for joining me, Greeley. Where oh, can man. people find you? What are you working on? Um, so I'm releasing my album. Uh, it's called Yeah the Grills. It's coming out soon. Lewis Featuring features me. on it. I'll yeah. show you. I'll show you um, the mixed feature after this podcast is over. Oh, sick! I'm excited. Um, my first official feature on an album. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. On a, yeah, fully. Yeah. Well, I get it. you put out. Was your your release was it an EP or an album? Oh, that was just a mixtape. I mean, mixtape. on someone else's thing. Yeah, like, that's for sure. cool. I yeah. think that's that's really cool. Yeah. So that's going to be out um, in a month or so, and then. Uh, we'll be releasing Kane's EP, the rapper that I talked about, yep. my mate that I talked mm-hmm. about on Luke and Lewis. And I just recorded a new song for another fella. It's his first official song. His name's Monksy. Yeah. And uh, it's a song called Back in Town. It's and quite good. It's like a Tazzy Bogan club banger. Yeah. I showed Lewis just before. It's and, very um, funny. Yeah, I think it's going to pop, man. Yeah. I'm excited because, you know, man, I love, like, making cool shit happen with hip-hop and just, like... You know, I helped, I helped a collab between Rates and Cogs the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. How that's, dope will that be? That's an interesting mix. Yeah, they've That'll never, be cool. never collabed. That's cool. Yeah. And so, yeah, I linked that up the other day. I love just doing that. I, you know, pick mm. artists or someone that I see talented and just help giving them that platform and just seeing how it goes, you know. So, um, I love putting people on. It's it's really cool. It's the best. You get, I get really excited because, you know, you know yourself, man. Like, when you... Well, because I never got it. I was yeah. like shut out and shunned when yeah. I started, and I really looked up to all these people who were like, "Ugh, internet comic." And, and, no. and man, when you know you you upload fucking a thousand times more videos than I do, it you don't get any endorphins from it anymore. Mm. You're just like, upload. Oh yeah, it's doing really well. Uh, numbers on the screen. Happy that it's doing well. Yeah. But that excitement's gone. You've done it a million times, you know. Yeah. So even like I was recording with uh, Monksy yesterday and he was just nervous and excited yeah. and just seeing that energy it just made me excited. And I was like, oh, yeah. sick. That's yes. right. Remember the honeymoon stage of doing this shit? Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that sort of shit. So I'll be doing that. I'm looking forward to doing these shows with you and having another chance to do um, some comedy uh, with a really good crowd because your, your audience and fan base are just fucking sick cunts. Yes. You know, yeah. do, doing the, um, I opened up for Luke at the show with Lewis and it was sick. It was like, how yeah. many tickets were sold, do you know? It was sold out. Yeah. So whatever can fit in there. Yeah, I think it was sold it was out or something. Yeah. It was just sick. And I was backstage with you and Luke and I was just like, Man. just fun. And, you yeah. know, I was like, oh, I'm up, boom, you know. And then yeah, you, I love boom, doing that show know. as well because it's the first show that I'd done that wasn't like my show. I'm like, all I have to do yeah. is do my bit and yeah. then it's, and then it's Luke's problem. Mm. Great. For it sure, was man. it was really it was very cool like seeing you and then jumping up and doing a little bit and then be like all right here's my mate yeah and then Luke killed it yeah he did a really good show for his mm. last show of the tour yes yeah there was some great crowd work and um but yes yeah, that's what I'm up to I, I really want to keep doing more comedy catching up with you and you moving to Tassie has definitely yep. tickled my funny bone again and awesome. it's just like oh this is exciting I guess it like I love doing hip hop shows and that's my shit you know but I just get such a excitable like yeah. even after the gig I put up this post like oh my god thanks so much to Lewis you know and blah 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 and I just appreciate it so much man yeah. because it reignites that like 
childhood excitement that mm. I have for being creative and performing. Yeah. Which when you perform for half your life can, you know, it can get a bit morbid and you just mm. rinse, wash, repeat. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I think, uh, yeah, hopefully next year be way more of it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, check out Greeley. I'll talk to you guys next Sunday. Have a shit Have one. Have a good one.